I really think there's lots of counters here that SFM can pull out. He can pull out things like perhaps something like a Skarna we've seen him play in the past. The sets, what Karsa pulled out, which didn't go to much success because he didn't get too many early game plays in. Even but a Rek'Sai? Even a Rek'Sai could be good. I don't like... I can't believe what I'm hearing too here. Much, but it's banned out, so four junglers down now for SFM. Oh, this is wild. Okay, so... The cool thing here is, again, Karsa, SOFM, legendary Lee Sin players. And so the fact that, you know, Jin has been such high priority to then pivot and then have such high priority on Lee Sin. We already talked about, you know, how uh, Ezreal has been really influential from both of these AD carries. We did see a little bit of the hover of the Kalista, but like, this is a lot of agency, uh, a lot of like, pocket picks for all of these players and when it comes down to this mentality of the 51 percent i can outplay my opponent this is exactly the types of champions that you want the least since the ezreal's okay yeah, for someone like me who doesn't understand it that much why would you go away from your comfort if it's open is this to pick away something that jackie love is super comfortable on then perhaps they're unsure of the thing is if you're playing Jin into, into least and you're very mobile so if you can get instantly kicked out if they pick the Orn as well you're super mobile the ezreal just frees up a lot you can get the mid push alone you're very sort of self-sufficient in a way where you can catch waves you can be safe on your own you can use your your e away to get from away from Makes the Lee Sin. Um, but it can be countered. We've oh, seen things like the Kai'Sa hovering the Draven, Draven here. Man. The thing with Estrel is it's a losing, it, m most of the time it loses lane because it doesn't have many push push options, similar to Senna. Can take tower planes fast, but things like the Caitlyn, the Draven, even things like Kai'Sa do really well into him. So we've seen a Caitlyn pick here. Damon did this yesterday. They picked Caitlyn on blue side, left their support pick to, red, uh, to the 4-5. Um, but if they want to go for something like Caitlyn Morgana here, it can get countered. So Caitlyn Lux does work better. I'm expecting some kind of response from Sunning, perhaps Astral Karma if they want to match range support, or they can just pick up their jungler, because I feel like if they don't pick up their jungler on three, they might struggle in the 4-5. In the, in the so uh, Jackie Love going for lane dominance here. Uh, he is a very well-known Draven player, so that hover is not just him playing. He can pull the trigger on that one. Uh, Kedra already talked about how these two champions will synergize together. You hit a Lux Binding. We saw it from um, Team Liquid. The trap comes out. You can put out massive amounts of damage. And now I'm curious if they'll double down on it, as Kedra was talking about, and start to pinch uh, maybe support pool. Like, maybe you try to take away the Karma to make sure that you absolutely win the 2v2. Or if Sooning are just going to, like, sack the bot lane, they know that they have the Ezreal, he can play safe, he can farm from a distance, and then find a really strong setup support like that Leona, yeah. and then uh, double down on SOFM finding some sort of hard farming jungler, and then allowing uh, Sword Art to be the primary gank assist or setup for that carry potential. Things like Hecarim are still available. SOFM does play it, even if he hasn't really shown it at world so mm -hmm. far. So it is an old school pick for him. I like the Leona pick. It just, it just solidifies your 3v3 to be strong stronger if you can get some sort of engage. It's really good against the Lux as well. So if this Lux or Caitlyn isn't running something like the Cleanse, they can get popped in a CC combo. So they're going to ban out mids, obviously, because they have the Orana. They can ban away things like the Azir, perhaps even things like the LeBlanc if they want to. They're scared of the least in LeBlanc combo, where it's on the side of top esports. Or the Zoe. The, the side of top esports are going to ban away probably junglers here. I'm looking at. I think there's a lot of junglers open. I think SOFM must have said that he was confident. I'm a bit confused by the Jarvan ban because it's because of the Oriana. They want a traditional uh, cannonball composition, mm. and it's like the LPL staple in classic. Yeah, Leeson versus Jarvan is quite fair for Leeson, but that makes a lot of sense. For the team fight so i'm looking at things like hecker moriana here i'm looking at things like rexai perhaps even skarna could be good if they can find some carry top which i think sunning has always been leaning towards we saw been on the Orin last game it's his first time on Orin. this guy's always playing carry tops they're definitely gonna last pick top in this series so even things like a, a Gangplank are also still available. By banning Silas, it does have me lean towards more of like a Gangplank and a Hecarim as kind of the picks to round out um, the composition because Silas obviously would be able to take away those big key ultimates, so it does make it safer to pick those champions. When we do know that Knight and 369 could have also taken the Silas. I wonder if they might just want to pick away GP here because GP is so good for their comp. I think he's also really nice blind unless maybe they go for a Renekton. Yeah, I think GP doesn't really have many counters uh, other than maybe some ranged top laners, things like the Jace, if you want to go into those kind of matchups. Oh my God, <laughs> it's going Hecarim. It's the ball delivery. Oh, no. This is like totally set for oh, Hecarim. Man. They're diving the backline. They definitely need to pick some sort of engage here. I'm expecting someone like a Hecarim on last pick. Uh, I'm expecting something like a GP counter top here for 369. It's such a good matchup. GP into Shen always has the push. They're going to go Echo, it looks like, into the mid lane of Oriana from Angel. And I mean, if you can look at Sunning's comp, you know they're diving your backline. Uh -huh. Ezreal's playing on his own in the backline as himself. So the Shen, the Oriana, the Hecarim are all going in the backline. Ezreal's being self sufficient. And uh, I, like the, I like the response from top esports. Don't pick a mage. Don't, don't allow yourself to get dove. Pick an assassin with an ult, which can kind of play self sufficient as well. So. They've got, they've got winning lanes, they've got a counter in every single lane. 
doesn't look like they're gonna go for the GP. They're gonna go for something like the Rennington instead. Yeah, I feel like they're gonna try to uh, split up fights. It's gonna be diving into backline. Who gets there first? We have already set up the Hecarim. I expect either a Hecarim or maybe even a Nocturne would be the pick here. If you uh, pivoted towards a Nocturne, it's because you are worried about Is that it Shen jungle? play. It's a River Shen. Oh my God. Is it a River Shen? It's a hover, but a you're fan. so excited, so I hope it gets locked in for you. I'm a fan of the River Shen. It's really good against Lee Sin, so they're definitely countering top here. Jax the mind Renekin isn't what I expected. This is but why you don't talk about Hover's Cadrill first. Lesson of fix and man. You get too excited. That is that is really naughty what they pulled out there. I like it. All They've right, got the Jax here we go. Really They've got the Jax on side lane with the Shenel. So if they can get this Jax rolling, he's unleashed on the side lane. And he's unkillable. The problem I have is I think Rennington beats Jax in the early game. I think that you have, yes, your mid lane's getting pushed in, but you really have a hard winning bot as well. But they have a winning jungle. They have a really hard winning uh, mid as well. So I need the notes on the River Shen, on the Jungle Shen. The notes? Yes. I mean, you well, power <laughs> <Formatol. Eclipse notes. laughs> Well, let me tell you, he wins 1v1 against Lee Sin, pre-level 4. He doesn't clear too fast. He's a single target damage camp clearer, so you'll see him do something like Blue Gromp Red, Red Blue Gromp into Krugs. The Raptors are a bit annoying, but SOFM's a Raptors connoisseur, so you won't have a problem with that. And it's really good in mid 2v2s so if you can get the taunt flash. It's really good on the ults because basically as soon as you hit 6, you can power farm. If the enemy jungle makes a play, you ult on the play. So not only have you got really good early game, you have really good dragon control as well because Shen is really good at doing the Drake with his Q and the W. You have really good decent engage with Leona Shen now and you have some sideline pressure into the mid game when the tier 1s are down for the Shen ult. But it's still an adaptation from SOFM. This is not the power farming jungler. This is about uh, the setup towards level six. Maybe he tries to hard farm for it to get it very early on and then making plays into the side lane and most importantly, setting up his top laner for success. Like you said, Renekton versus Jax can be very brutal early on, but you want to make sure that you can get that Jax out of the lane and then make him unkillable with a Shin ultimate later on. What we've seen is team fights. Who gets the edge here? The thing is, Top Esports have drafted a 1-3-1 one one comp. They have Caitlyn Lux mid for the push, then they have Echo and Renekton overside. So they're not playing for team fights too much. Whereas on the other side, on the side of Sunning, you had a huge team fight comp thinking we we're going to go for Hecarim last pick, but then they went for a 1-4 with a Shen ult. So I'm not sure. They have the yeah. or, they have they have the decent team fight comp with Ezreal and Renekton and stuff like this, but they have also decent side pressure. So it all depends. If the Jax is ahead, you have side pressure. If you don't have side pressure, you're going to lose. The team what fights. I'm hearing is both drafted side lanes, which means we're still going to see team fights because that's what we've <laughs> seen. Uh, but Jax we'll see is flying happens. in there with Shin and Ori on top of him. <laughs> Very interesting but they have draft. So much I want to well. know what our casters have to say about it. That's enough now. I know you guys are excited, <laughs> but we're going to leave it over to Freak and Kobe for Game Three. Good luck, guys. Thank you very much, Shox, and we are on to the rift for game three. A tie score between Top Esports and Sooning in this best of five, and already we get excitement Ooh. as Sooning are going for an aggressive level one in the bottom side. Yunja, this, I think this is really smart because you, if you get a summoner spell off of a Caitlyn Lux lane, you can destroy them. And they're not going to go for more, okay? Now, I will say that this, they used an early Caitlyn Lux pick from Top Esports in the first game versus Sooning in the semifinals. And it creates this situation where both junglers, not just Karsa, have to deal with the possibility, there we go, uh, have to deal with the <laughs> possibilities of topside volatile matchup plus a Caitlyn Lux lane, which wants to perma push, wants to get you under the tower, wants to farm their own turret plates off that tower. Yeah. But has the possibility of falling prey to a Leona Shen combination. That's why a level one looking to get a summoner spell off the bottom lane could have been a really big thing for Sooning yes. because they want to, you know, try and use the threat of your all in with your Leona Shen uh, coming down there to punish the ever pushing Caitlyn Lux. And you can see Uyunja going for summoner heal. Now, Guardian is very typical for support Lux. It was actually nerfed and still being used all the time as they're going to kind of step up. It is going to be Relic Shield Lux, which gives her some more durability overall. They're going for autos and a sword art. And realistically, with, with the rank 1W for Lux, you do not win any two on two as any champion. It yeah. is always a lead, so they can walk in and auto attack, and Sword Art must run away. Makes them make the play happen, but now 369 gonna play aggressively early on. And I am intrigued with how the early game is going to play out because you have a pushing top side, a pushing bot side, but a losing mid lane. And the cars just navigate around both extremes of the map. Yeah, and it creates a very interesting dichotomy. Uh, he's going for the red steel here first. This way, you circumvent the problem of a Shen going up to try and help Jax. Because the analyst has touched on it a little bit, but 
Renekton can really lay hurt on Jax early on, and especially if you have a Lee Sin cycling on the top side of this map, by removing Shen's top side camps, you make it very inefficient for the Shen to go up there and try and help that matchup. Uh, and Karsa's going up there first. Rage Bar is charged up for 369, but he's low on health. Is there going to be a stun? What's the timing and everything? But now another fight into the bottom side. Shields come back out. Jackula forced to cleanse. He's actually running out of health now. They are charging in. He's got a flash away to safety, but the flash stun for Sword Art. And first blood comes through trade it back though it's going to be a kill coming through for Ezreal one trade it back for Lux still dead 80 carries for both teams oh you have to play that lane with no fear freak when you're playing the the Leona side of it let's see if the follow-up here on the jungle though SOFM wants to stab Karsa in the back level three for both actually no only level two right now That's for weird. Karsa he's being pushed around smites for health that means SOFM gets the very easy take of Gromp and Karsa is on two camps to four right now River Shen cannot be trifled with, Freak. And he's gonna die. keep laying it on. Has to flash for the shield, flash to stun into the turret, and that's gonna be a kill picked up, but a trade stun. It might be Bin going down. No! You gotta be kidding, Suning. Two for zero topside. River Shen reigns Woo! supreme. Are you kidding me? S-O-F-M style of me on full display here. He follows the Lee Sin up to the top side. Yeah, you stole my red, but we are gonna get the Jack an early lead are you kidding me this is an overwhelmingly great start for Suning gaming considering the champion select that they had this is a dream scenario Renekton down in farm down in kills to a Jax bottom side already burning summoners the Leona playing aggressively getting that advantage there SOFM forcing the early smite for health from Karsa finishes up the Gromp and they go for the kill Bin does not hesitate this is a rookie on the world stage here, semi-finals. He gets the extra kill, and they're right back at it. Well, Knight low on mana gets taunted up. Now gonna look for his stun, but also if I'm gonna get out of range of that W. Shield doesn't mean too much. Knight can walk away back to mid lane as he had shoved and looked around. Four CS difference in mid. Angel picking up a bit. Hex flash behind. Jackie Love gonna be found out. Stunned in place. Not a lot of good news out of this one. He's gonna fall. Juan Feng finds his second kill of the game. Oh, they've learned something after the first meetup here for sure. Sword Art also sowing his style. Hex flash <laughs> over to punish. The flares just keep on coming, freak. Oh, uh, the G2 flare against Jackie Love. Like, you might have won in the final, but you're not against the LEC today, buddy. You're against the LPL, and we're going to take you down. Sooning off to a great start so far in game three. Knight has ult advantage. He could tower dive a bit here against Angel, get some damage, walks away. Knight's walking into the Summoner's Rift and the whole thing's on fire right now. He's like, I'm ahead in CS here on my Echo matchup in mid lane. What's going on in the sides here? Top esports, number one LPL seed, are coming apart at the seams and it is due to Sooning's flexibility, something that they have been criticized for here. Uh, and they have really shown up such, such big moves here in the early stages. Now, got to calm down though and look at how they play it out because the veterans here on top esports still gonna try and retake control. The Caitlyn Lux still wants to pull the same game plan. Nice deep ward there from Sword Art. Does see the hover from Karsa though, and they won't get it off uh, the, the ground right now. I mean, this, this Caitlyn Lux being on their side of the map is just such beautiful vision here for Sooning Gaming because the aggressive play from Sword Art and, and Huang Feng, they have been able to take away any of that priority. Nice little bit of damage there from Angel, and we've got a 2,000 gold difference. And I, 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 I'm kind of stuck on the G2 flare, actually, because <laughs> Jackie Love's finals victory was against Fnatic. I don't know if you want to, like, say, hey, look at this matchup you won. But if you're trying to find a BO5 to tilt Jackie Love, where's the Team Liquid flare? Where's the, hey, remember MSI semifinals from last year? Like, if you're going to pick something, mm. they've got to tilt Jackie Love. It's like, hey, remember losing in the spring split to JD Gaming? And, I mean, it's not great, right? But he doesn't lose a lot of matches, so those are the only two I can think of. Yeah, I can tell you're stuck on it, but it's fine, Freak. <laughs> <laughs> Shen now at the bottom side of the map, and remember, we're trying to set up the possibilities, um, and they're greatly enhanced by Sword Art playing so aggressively here with, with Huang Feng not hesitating to arcane shift in every time he goes for a combination. Now that you have the possibilities of Flash Shen following up, Jackie Love and uh, here we go, another look. They got the shields, they get the health going back, and now a root is a lot of damage back over towards the poor Sword Art. 
200 health left, and now Huanfeng is on the run. Suddenly, they are out of damage. They are out of crowd control. And that is how those trades are supposed to go once you've got, you know, the ability to get your spells off and stay alive long if you're not getting bursted. We are between recalls for Huanfeng, right? No bonus damage, just the cool. That is not a lot right now. Once he gets a Sheen and some more, it looks scary again, but Freak. Uh, low damage. I got to talk more about River okay. Shen. You know okay. I've been spamming the jungle Shen. I love it so much when it, it showed up for us in North America. This is an ultimate already coming out of him into the 1v1. And it's going to be a flash into the tot, and Ben follows through for his second kill. Sooning winning the bot lane. They're winning the top lane. Karsik can solo a Drake, but that is all that top esports are getting. I wasn't even going to talk about the ultimate play. I was going to talk about the build. This is no support Shen from the jungle build, Freak. This is the solo queue hard carry Shen you love to see. He's going to turn his Tiamat into a Titanic. He rushes the Tiamat for the jungle clear because they had the successful play on top side and he got so much money. This means Shen gets to power through the jungle. Usually you'll have a slow clear, but with an early Tiamat rushed off of that top side success, you get to your level six so quickly. He made the top side play. Bin, though, has to deal with Knight's Roam. And here comes the play to the top side. Now, Bin does have flash. Knight is not going to get the stun, but he's going to get part of a slow. A little bit of chase down, going to get the passive off. Not going to be much more. Bin walks away. Still has a 23 CS lead. He's got two kills. He's up a level. Top diff is in full effect right now. And maybe Top Esports gets something back. They're fighting for Top Herald, but SWFM is here. Angel is here, and we may see Bin come down soon. Yeah, they're going to run him right off this Rift Herald. Uh, looks like they they have to wait for Bin to come down though. This is a fully stacked up Rage Renekton. They're calling. Teleport. He does have teleport. So just the recall doesn't mean they're giving up on it though. They have Sword Arts Roam. The AD carries are coming from base, and that's plenty of time with that full leash on the patients. Plenty of time for him to get back. And bot lane was mostly shoved in. It's going to slow push back towards Soning soon enough. They're going to have more farm down there when they re-engage into that lane. For now, we still have the Scuttle fight, the Herald fight, and it's going to be a full 5-on-5. Five Vin is choosing to walk instead of TP. Now comes the Teleport. Now comes the 5-on-5 five five at 9.30 for Rift Herald. And here comes the Brawl. Now, Suning have the gold lead. They spent all the money on Bin. He's the one holding all the cards. And the fight comes in. The smite goes through. I believe Karsa grabbed it. But now we got the fight coming across now to the front side. We've got the ults coming across. Sword Art going to stay alive and walk away. Bin going to come in for a bit more. Karsa over the wall stays alive. 269 pops the ult. He wants to go back in. It's actually SOFM who is holding on to Rift Herald. So it was Suning who grabbed it. And now the flash away. They are respecting 369's flash stun. When's he going to go for it? Looking at SOFM, he's going to find that stun. Now to the back line. The other side of the fight is the important part. Knight finds SOFM, but a re-kill comes through for Juan Feng. Still the four on four. Second kill comes through for Sword Art, knocking down the rest of the bot lane. And it's time to run away. Top Esports lose the Herald. They lose two kills. It's all Suning in game three. Welcome to the LPL side of the bracket here. We've got two fights going on. The deep chase onto SOFM does result in the kill on the jungler, but Suning always look for the possibility of the turn on this play. I was going to mention that the shockwave was held onto for so long by Angel. Once Bin finds the opportunity, they just cut off the backside. Knight and 369 dive so deep onto the jungle Shen to go kill him, it sets it up. Sword Art goes in, and Angel, he held onto that shockwave for so long. Patience is a virtue freak, and it paid off. It really did. 4,000 gold lead with more coming in. Once Herald is summoned, we're going to see the Cinder Hulk complete from SOFM and then finish Titanic, as you were mentioning before. We're still seeing the scaling build out of the Orianas. Angel, this time around, going for the more typical Archangel staff and the champion. Knight going towards most likely Proto Belt for extra wave clear. And we'll wait as more items come through. Mana Mooney completed for Huan Feng. Right now, just the BF sword for Jackie Love. So he is going to be still in danger. Zero and three on Caitlyn. In game one, I said this. He was the best AD carry in the world. He's having a pretty rough series so far. I have to say, Free, considering the champion select, the way this early game has gone is just an absolute avalanche in the favor of Sooning. And the reason this is so exciting for them is because, like all series long, we've been mentioning the history between these two teams of how much TS has taken them down. Uh, you know, Sooning only winning that one game versus them in spring in the regular season. But it's about growth, and League of Legends is always about getting better, and especially here on the world stage. For Sooning to show this is just tremendous. Look at that damage. And of course, Shenalty is up, so Bin has a shield in his back pocket, forcing 369 away. They thought he was counterpicking Shen. They moved the jungle, and now a cleanse is going to get Jackie Live to safety. Dotting both ultis as a result, he's going to stay alive. 
and goes for a bit of wave clear. Should be not much of a problem, but first turret is gone. And they're gonna get the second charge, no problem here from Rift Herald as well. I believe they actually spot Karsa bottom jungle. Bin knows he is safe. SOFM gets a defensive ward down there, and they might take top lane tier two as well. <laughs> yeah, the Jax bonk is way more fearsome than the Orn bonk, Freak. That is a very different noise. Bin is living the Jax dream. Top side, both towers already down, greatly accelerated into the split push game. Meanwhile, Sword Art and Juan Fung still looking for those plays, keeping their tower pristine. Between cooldowns for now, good damage there. Juan Fung takes a Q, good expectation for Jackie Liv to Q to the side. One point about Caitlyn Leona I want to talk about actually is an interesting interaction. Caitlyn's E. Uh, the dash away, it does not dash if you are CC. Now a fight in the bottom side. 3v2 though, because Carson was already there. I know your tactics, but the Shen shows up now as well. Can't find the taunt. Hilper coming down now. This is a 4v3. Sword Art already knows he is dead. Carson gets the kill with red buff, and a stun's gonna come across now to SOFM. They are chasing in. They find the laser, and they're gonna find two kills. TES showing signs of life. A Drake is available as well. Nice double teleport counter here for TES. And the big part is, as you mentioned, an objective afterwards. It's not just a couple of kills, not just some gold in their pockets, which, by the way, they desperately need, but it is going to be dragon number two for them. Angel doing some work himself, tries to get something by hand, but uh, honestly, really good timing for that play, too. You get a full reset since top two towers were both taken. 369 using his teleport early there is not punishable since there's there's nothing for Jax to really get. He has to push it up the really long lane and Renekton gets the reset, gets to go catch the wave. Well, if Top Esports can somehow stack this, it's gonna be a sub 25 minute Ocean Soul. See if that's even possible though. Keep in mind, plenty of burst damage from the Orianna plus everything else combo coming through. May not mean too much for poor Jackula. You've got the very fast Mikhail's Crucible in for Uyanja. That's going to be nice. That's what he's going to spend those two kills worth of gold on. So Jackie Love, if he tries to get away from the owner, by the way. Ah, oh, never mind. We got to fight. All right. So this is the replay. And as you were talking about, Carson laying in wait, trying to pull it out. They were setting this play up for so long. And this is this shows so much of the foresight of top esports. Both teleports were preemptively looking down there. Carsa laying in wait. They knew they had to make an all-in play at this juncture, lest the game go completely snowball in Suning's favor. If not for that commitment, Freak, to a yeah. comeback play on the bottom side of the map, this would have just absolutely snowballed out of control. Even so, it might do that, uh, given how sure. strong Jax is and how open uh, the possibilities of the split are for Bin. It kind of feels like the more obvious version of game one, where Suning had a winning top lane and he was able to win it on the Wukong. Suning now winning top lane, but a lot better everywhere else. Top Esports may just not have that ace up their sleeve to turn things around. The long story short, if you're CC'd, you don't move anywhere with the Caitlyn E. Unlike things like Arcane Shift or Rocket Jump, you just stay in place to shoot the net and do nothing, which makes it very hard to evade Leona. Because by the time you see the E come out, it's too late. You will be rooted by the time the, the net comes out. So you have to basically predict yeah. when the CC comes in or you're dead. How fitting. Zenith Blade moves faster than light, basically. Yeah. <laughs> able, able to get there. Uh, Sword Art here uh, continuing to push on the bottom side, regardless of who's there. You know, they have been able to rotate uh, into the 1 3 1 here, and it's Ooh. Knight going for the kill. On Fung. Okay, gonna burn the ulti quickly for health, but now Karsa gets the kick flash backwards. No way out finds it slow. They might get more sword art. Does have flash if he needs it, burns it here, but Knight is still in the chase. They're gonna have more damage. The Q comes through, and it's gonna finally get picked up. Knight gonna find the kill. The double flashes at a turret, and that's two crucial kills. The Echo has been unlocked to the side lane. Yeah, Knight trying to pull this one back after the teleport play. Karsa coming in with that sweet kickback as well. Very timely for them. This is them clawing their way back into the game. And Echo will be the answer in one of these possibilities of trying to push out uh, the opposite side lane here. Now, Jack's extremely fed and is going to get to a super early Trinity Force at that two item power spike is going to be a massive threat. But Knight has quickly racked up three kills for himself. Uh, Proto Belt, and it looks like he's going into the Lich Bane too with the early Sheen here, uh, going for one shot possibilities. I, I really like that because that's, that's what you have to go for in games like this. You do have to be the true assassin, finding those extremely important kills onto the Ezreal, onto the Orianna. 
We are going to see a tankier build of cars with those stacking up. Might go for a Black Cleaver. That is part of the build, but you may see something like War Mogs instead, although that would be too early for the, the stacking. We'll see where it goes. There's a couple of different options with those items. Uh, regardless, though, yeah, damage starting to come through. Wanted to see Knight find the assassination place. Triforce coming in pretty soon for Bin. This is still looking pretty good for Suning, but it has started moving back towards TES. Next Drake spawns in 115, and that kind of signals, all right, it's time to get your recalls off, get your items ready, and hope you have enough for the next fight right now. Iceborne Gauntlet may finish in time for Huan Feng. Angel, of course, happily with Seraph's complete. Super happy to see the, the plays from top as well. You know, them continuing to fire away and mechanically execute on these plays while they're down shows resilience on the world stage. You know, we mentioned already, if you if you took out Jackie Love and the two uh, Flash Wolves players, then this is the first time at, at Worlds for everybody else in this game. And everybody's been talking so much about the high caliber of Knight. Glad to see that yeah. uh, some losing side lanes aren't going to deter him from trying to make big plays. And I was wondering in the series when Knight was going to show up. He's the 2020 Summer Split MVP of the LPL. Obviously, all pro mid there as well. 369 was third place all pro team, and that was it. That was the all pro team from Top Esports. It was just Knight in 369, and Knight was first place. And finally, finding a game for himself where he is going to be the difference maker. He's going to be the one who to do the heavy lifting. Most CS on his team, most kills in his team. The mid lane turret will fall. Suning up to 3 0 on turrets. His Drake is alive now, and Knight is about to be in a 1v3. Yep, they definitely want to play off the jacks on the side of Suning. They're trying to take down three kill Echo here. He goes for the wave first. Delays the shield as long as he can. Says, all right, there's no dive anymore. Angel took a shot from the turret. You can't get out though. Look at yeah. look at the mini-map right now. It's it's TS committing to this push on the other side. He's on TP. He is. All right, they're gonna join up with the rest of the squad. Now Cars is sitting there just farming his wolves. Like he's not part of this play. They're like, TP is enough, just get your farm, it's okay. But this dragon. This dragon is alive. And Cars on the wrong side of the map for it. So no one is gonna fight for this one. Drake will be handed over. Instead, top is pushed into the turret. 369 would have loved to get the turret as a trade, but because of the pressure bot side, had the TP and help out Knight. Yeah, I don't think they can afford to lose Knight, because even if you do trade the, the turret in that situation, you're opening the map up further for Bin, for this Jax, who's about to complete Trinity Force, to just run rampant. And yes, it does hurt for top to give up that dragon, but because they're so far behind in gold, that's why often the early dragon leads like this, where you're losing in other sides, other parts of the map, you're giving up a lot of gold, don't make dragon stacking really feasible unless your opponents mess up. Because they're getting so much more gold, those fights around those you know, th third and fourth dragons are so heavily in their favor. So it's time to stack up. You can see the gold has plateaued and come back somewhat. Obviously still very much in Suning's favor. Dragon Soul just tended to not mean too much so far in this series. Teams have gotten close and then it was too late and the other team is ready to go back for this one. TES shortcutting the Dragon Soul point. They're going at two and then, you know, it's time to go the other way with this one. Obviously yeah. Suning have been in control the whole time. They've been getting top pressure as a trade for some Drakes that are fairly inconsequential. And as we see the split push start to develop, Freak, I just want to re-emphasize and go into detail why it's so strong. Yes, you know, the Jacks got super fed early. That's dream scenario. But this is a team with also the jungle Shen and a Leona for forcing on the other side of the map. So you are faced with this catch-22 situation on the side of TES where you have too many problems to deal with. The Shen can come stand United the Jax if you try and cut off the Jax and overload that side. Plus, you have to worry about dive opportunities from the Leona hard CC into shockwaves from Orianna, pulling off uh, plays for the other yep. side as well. So I just, that's why considering the drafts coming in, uh, Suning are, are so happy here. Yeah, the 4-1 the split push is actually a 2-3 at any point in time where it looks even remotely close. And, and as you mentioned, right, the Leona can just punish the weak side when you do try to show up on a Jack. So good luck with this one. Trinity Force now completed. Ben is the strongest champion on the map. No one can duel him. Luba fight comes in. Oriana coming down. They find the stun, and this could be a kill. Oh, she is attacked, and goodbye. Uyan Jha tries to flash. Shield stays alive. Night Force ult away as well, but the blue is stolen. No kills, good survival, I suppose, but Suning can still just flex their muscles across this map. And honestly, he d he owes his life to Knight right there <laughs> because Knight tries to apply pressure to Huan Feng in order to get them to stop chasing Yuan Jia. 
Yeah. And he, he's able to do it. It costs his ultimate. It does cost cooldowns for them, but uh, he ensures the survival of their support. Well, live another day. You get a bit more time. No easy Baron attempts right now. Gold difference still sits at 3,000 gold. It's not gigantic, but it's certainly a big lead. It's certainly looking quite Sooning favored. Item spikes are coming through. Leandri is now done for Angel. Iceborne plus QSS done for Huan Feng. He's going to be a difficult target to kill. We already mentioned the two items done for Bin, so he's going to keep running around the side lanes. And four turrets already gone. We, of course, saw top lane 2-2 two, two drop to the first Rift Herald a while back. But the outers in mid and bot are gone as well, and we'll look for the next target from Sooning. Next Drake's in a minute 45. I don't know if they're going to play for Soul or not, but they can at least go for a, another turret probably. Honestly, I'm actually really impressed with how Top have played this, considering how devastating the early game was for them. Um, and you always have to keep your mind open to the possibilities of the Echo one-shots here. So Knight's position with a teleport is going to be number one priority for Sooning to keep track of. Currently, he's teleporting and he's holding the, or he's uh, split pushing and holding the threat of his teleport in a way to get gold back for TES. And they've been slowly clawing their way back into this game ever since the devastation that happened in top side and bottom side right at the very beginning. Yeah. Honestly, the composure of this team, uh, of the number one seed from the LPL, definitely showing up really big here. I mean, top esports. It's going to fall tonight. It's it's the MVP of the strongest team in the strongest region in the world. The only region at Worlds 2020 with two semifinalists. We're seeing him right now. One of them must fall. And one of them will face Dom Juan in the finals. We'll see if they can keep that three-year LPL trophy heist going. Or the return of the LCK. We'll see. All right now, Juan Fung just pushing down the waves. And we wait to see what the Echo can do and what the Jax can do. Top lane turret did fall. It was the first one for top esports. Good job, Knight. Has to respect Wan Fung. Gets poked down a little bit. Next Possibility of a shield stun. Next wave gets into the turret here, and they're going the for play. it. They find the kick. They find the assassination. And Angel is just that for 40 seconds. We'll see a reborn later, but it's time for Drake number three. Garza the assassin. Now we're going again. We got more assassination. Uyanja is going to go down. The support kill does not mean the end of it all, though. Can the 4v4 even happen, though, because Bin has arrived. Damage to Sword Art not rooted, though. What a great re-engage. Sword Art far into the opportunity. All right. Got to keep your eyes open here. Knight is actually looking for a burst play. You can go in. Carson can jump to you. Look for the long Q. And they get... Chance at a stun. Just ults away. I like the attempt in case of the miss smite. There's really no cost there. But SOFM does land the smite. Does grab it. And now two drakes apiece. All right. Sooning now. Stacking it for themselves. I don't think it's going to turn into that. Could be a really long game, though, if, uh, if we keep having plays like this. Karsa stealthily sneaks into the back. He bides his time, and he finds the priority target. And guess what, Angel? You're going right back to the fountain. That's for the Zoe game and all those <laughs> Zoe bubbles he hit Karsa with. That's for making him die with the Rift Herald. Some sweet vengeance there for Karsa in this game. But honestly, yeah. again, the vision paramount. We keep on rattling on it. Karsa's always talk about vision. And it really does result in some of these game-changing plays. Karsa smites in front of his brother, says, there's a chance you could have stolen this one. So we'll just make sure I grab this scuttle. Uh, no easy Baron sneaks. Now, it could be done with the blast plants from the red side jungle. That's actually a possibility for Suning. Doesn't seem likely, but it is one way you can play this because the ward control actually does belong to Suning around the Baron pit here. Clearing jungle camps for now. Uh, we sadly are not seeing team at upgrade, at least not for a while. SOFM goes all the way to uh, his next defensive item. You know, you got the spirit message in there. <laughs> Hopefully one day we get the Tannic. I mean, I, I love the damage that comes out for it. The reason I, when I mentioned it, I'm talking about solo queue builds because the burst damage when you have a Titanic is so good. If you get your pass through on your Q, you get a bunch of extra attack speed. It gives you the attack reset as well, right when you go in. Um, but he is known for his tanky builds, of course, uh, even on champions like Lee Sin, even on Olaf. He was the one that kind of started that redemption Olaf way back in the day. Yeah. So not surprised to see the Spirit Visage here. Um, let's take a look at how Top Esports try and continue to defend. And honestly, they've done a very good job with this. Uh, Caitlyn easily able to control mid while you just have Renekton hugging the turret. And Knight is really the one that kind of makes the more uh, adventurous side lane play, trying to get a little breathing room for them. 
So trying to farm as best they can, but you can see the amount of farm earned by Suning generally higher across the board. Every single roll has higher CS, even including supports. So Suning just getting more of the waves, more of the jungle. Obviously, we've already seen more turrets. Drake's already tied up. Still waiting for the next big opening for top esports. They got the pick once in a while. They came back in kills. But farm and turrets, that still remained the gold difference. That's remained Suning being the better team so far in game three. Sword are not going to be the easy target. Still fighting over wards back and forth. Losing Singularity gives some vision. Blue buff handoff goes to Bin, so he's going to have all kinds of mana sustain. And Death Dance coming soon. I also think he should be pushing really hard on this bottom side um, to, to gain some more territory for them. If they could crack secondary turret there, that puts so much more pressure on the Baron. Because bottom side is is where you need to split push when you're trying to do the, the Baron dance for yourself. Furthest away requires the teleports in answer from TES. And, uh, and there's really not anything that they can do about it. Here it is. This is the 1-4 with the Baron attempt just to draw out cooldowns. You have to be very, very quick about pulling off that Baron damage. You do not want to get caught inside the pit and get stunned up by an Echo. That would be devastating for them. Uh, so there you go. You get your uh, short cooldown out. You keep Bin down bottom side and just back off. That's Lux Ult down. As you mentioned, shorter cooldown. She has, I think, 30% CDR in the current build, so not too bad. But then Jaculip also burns the blue trinket. So we got a bit of a downtime, but you can see Suning showing as they push the wave down. Nice root there, but they can't have the follow through on a sword art. He's just too tanky anyway. And out they go. But it means that round two can happen. We're still about 15, 20 seconds from Lux Ult being back up. So that is going to be a period of darkness that Suning can play around. But vision gotten. Carso lands the Q and SOFM, says, okay, still not on Baron yet. Honestly, here's an option for you too. Teleport your Shen down to the bottom side with your Stand United, because top aren't going to start the Baron themselves, and you just bully down that tower with Shen Jax. Renekton cannot do anything to that. And that's a way to offensively and proactively use your cooldowns in this situation, um, rather than waiting around here where you do see, because Yuan Jia has the early Mikhails. You talked about him rushing it so quickly. Yeah. Even the threat of the Leona we are talking about trying to punish on this side becomes null. And so if you're unwilling to kind of overload the Jack side, which I think is your trump card there, uh, you know, either having someone trail that split push or even committing the extra cooldown to send Shen down there, you, you fall into the stalemate with TES where they are very happy to keep it going. And Top Esports still keeping it going. The gold lead still sits about 3,000. That has flattened out. Now, third Drake is back alive. The recalls came through for soon. You can see the entire team coming out of the base. They did leave them as long as they could. They got the biggest spikes they could have. Uh, they have now walked back out of the map, though. In this ocean, Drake, you can see there is no contest here. He's going to spot it with the Scryer's Bloom. Theoretically, can look for the steal. Can go for it again. E over the wall, and it's not going to be enough. Shockwave comes through. Ult just gets him out, but Bin can find the stun. Is it enough damage, though? That might be too much to kick backwards. Shen over the top. The damage isn't enough. Has to jump back out to his squad. So it is not going to be any kills either side. Ult is burned. Whoa, that is one fun coming forward. He arcing shifted in, was targeted. End of the day, though, no harm, no foul. Everyone is alive. Three ocean drakes to Suning. Uh, you better be throwing all your honors at oh, SOFM. Wow. SOFM is so good with the smites. He hits another one. They're pinging onto the Baron already. Teleport used by Bin right back out there. You know, several ults are down right now. I mean, there's actually no ults up for top esports. As ult finds a bit of damage, they are burning this one down. And the Triple Ocean Drake keeps them a bit healthier while making this play, while playing for the bait. Shockwave's not up just yet. Ults are missing for Sooning as well. What's it going to be? They know what's going on here. Knight's still waiting out for his ult. He does have it now. And they can find the play. 4,800 left on Baron. They gotta get the in. They gotta get in soon. It's 4K. It's high resolution Baron right now. Looking for the play. Forward they go. They find the stun. Knight gets over the wall. But he can't find his way back in. 369 cutting around back and forth. Still waiting for his own ulti back up. But Baron is resetting. And it's going to be okay. Top Esports managed to weather the storm to manage to delay and let Baron reset and fight for the wards. I'm sweating here, Freak. That is so much more risky than even calling for a 4-1 dive of Jax Shen ultimate. If, we, if we're in the split push scenario, you Shen ult on your Jax, you just dive the Renekton. If he backs away, then you just take the turret. But starting the Baron like that is so risky. You see Top Esports just throwing out the skill shots, playing it calmly once again on the world stage. These, these guys in there, uh, oh my goodness, keeping a level head here pays off so big in these late game objective pulls. 
Angel and weird components, I want to point out. Uh, I don't believe NLR plus blasting builds into anything in League of Legends. The kick. Now in the mid lane, Half finds his old teammate and tries to find it, but a flash gets him to safety, plus the Shen ulti. Big cooldowns burn, but Karsa did use his own ult for this play. Shorter than Shen ult, to be fair. It's a, well, it is 30 CDR. It's not too bad on the Shen side, but now Ward control, River control goes to top esports. SOFM looking for a flank play, spotted by Wards, though. Got your stopwatches as well. At the Renekton now with a stopwatch for himself, so... The dive on him is really infeasible. Meanwhile, pushing, they've got priority on mid, but he's here. Looking at a root on Huan Fung. They're not going to find the stun from Knight just now as 369 pops his ulti, looking at SOFM. But all the while, the box from Jax come through, and they find turret kill number five. They finally get to that pesky second turret on bottom side with the three item Jax freak. Whew. All right, yeah. we're, we're definitely going the long haul. We are definitely going into Soul, uh, Soul Dragon territory here. This is going to be the Ocean Soul two minutes away. With the way that this has gone, I do not see them cracking through, yeah. uh, even off of a pick, barring this Soul Dragon fight, which is going to be huge rewards for Sooning. Uh, I think they need to invest a lot of these control wards first. It's, a, it's almost two minutes before... Uh, it comes up. If you just have your resets right now, make room in inventory for your control wards uh, to move yep. up so that you can actually play off the threat of that Leona. But Kobe, Soul Point has lost every game this series so far. It's it's a dubious stat. It's mm. just happened to become quite so dubious. Far. It is very dubious. I would consider it a positive to have Soul Point. It just has gone the other way. Jackie Love, though, finally on 3 item. Caitlyn has been there for a while. Gets really good damage out there. With the shields, he's going to feel safe. We got Shirelia's coming through for Yanjia. So it's going to be even more haste for the squad to get them in and out of fights as they need. Sword Art eats the trap, but still takes about 500 damage from Big Caitlyn. Mm. The wave goes down. Top Esports feeling comfortable now playing around three item Jackie Love. I would say as well, Jackie Love, if you're looking defensively, keep your eyes on him because he's going to have to pull the evasive maneuvers. Yeah. But if you're looking for the exciting play, it's all night. He's got a death cap on top of his Lich Bane proto belt right now. You have to keep your eyes on the Echo. You have to mark this Echo with your stun. Either Leona or the Shen has to be peeling him because if Knight gets through with nobody see seeing this Echo, that could be the way that this game actually slips through the fingers of Sooning. And it is going to come down to this Dragon fight without even the side lane preparation getting in their favor. Uh, it looks like the split on bottom side might be just a party for Ben. Can they get him in time, though? 30 seconds, 25. Looking for the stun. Can they find him? They get a slow only, but they're going to follow through on this one. The squad is coming around. The Huan Fung right behind Angel nearby as well. SOFM waiting on the ulti. Ben has a turret, but that turret can drop pretty quickly. They get the kickback, but it's not an wow. easy target. Karsa, there is a turret there. It's not going to work, and he dies at the crucial time. Ocean Soul alive in seven seconds, and there's no jungler to steal. Here comes the TP play. Sooning tries to end the game right now. Ben is on both sides of top oh. esports. Puts on the dodge. Looks for Uyanja. Finds that stun. Looks for the shutdown. They're going to get the kill thanks to Huan Fung. Now on the backside, it's the ulti out of Knight trying to get alive. Angel got to be careful, does get away. Same comes through for Knight and Jackie Love, but it is a 5v3. Ocean Soul cannot be stolen realistically. And Su Ning should have all the cards they need to close this one out. You five-person gank Bin, he's going to teleport right back out and 1v4 gank you. He cuts off their escape, and they are able to pick up not only the Soul Freak, but control over barren territory as well. TES will have one last thing to say about it. Spellbook over for the extra mana as well. Clarity popped out, but that Baron will be melted. It's going to go down. You don't have much of a chance to stop this one. Full health and mana the entire time. Ocean Soul does not help if you are bursted. The fact that we have Border Reminder already in for the Caitlyn, the Executioners for Renekton, those are going to help in the team fights. But these are very clearly looking like one-sided battles. 5,000 gold difference. Axe replay here. Ben, 1v4 into 1v4. I mean, he's able to kite out. He he stayed in for the stun. He was able to get the range. And right here, too deep, man. Too deep, Garza. Too, too deep, my friend. Oh, they wanted to make the big clutch play. That's that's one of the things where you know uh, that you have to make a big play to to come back into this game as Soul is arriving. But right there with the extra uh, inventory, they're not able to pull it off. Then Ben, Ben teleports right back out, cuts off their escape using the Counter-Strike, dodging out on the skill shot. He actually yeah. just makes the entire play complete there. This guy has been on fire. He has not stopped. 
since two minutes into this game. Yeah. I will say, with his Red Bull Baron going on for now, that Uyunja did miss his Light Binding off the Lee Sin kick. He shorted it, True. the angle was wrong. That fight looks a little different. If he's rooted in place, he doesn't get the jump back stun. Shen arrives away from the turret. Like, it can look different with different mechanics. So I don't want to be like full Karsa screwed up because maybe it's different with the skill shot landing. Regardless, desperation was happening. And it's a thick thousand gold lead with inhibitor turrets likely to fall. All right, now with the Baron buff, though, so much easier for Sooning to play the split push game. Two buffed up cannon minions right now will do the work for them. Bin does not have to risk anything for himself. Rest of the lanes will go down passively as Sooning close in on top esports, and they close in on set point of the series. Nothing likely here. It'll be a top esports comeback that they can win, and a very big one at that. Sooning have already taken down two of the very best teams in the world in their run to the Summoner's Cup. Looking at another one right now. Looking at a 2-1 lead in the best of five. Double match point. Vin looks at bot lane, respects the fact that there could be more of a dive, and Sword Art, that could be the target. No light binding, no play for the tank. And able to simply take ship damage again and again. Angel gets sniped pretty hard. The shield is sadly on cooldown a little bit too long. But mid lane turret at one third, bot lane below a half. Even top being chipped out a little bit by SOFM. And Vin is just unattackable. I mean, he's got Guardian Angel, he's level 18, he's full health and mana. Yeah. It'll always be full health and mana because of Ocean Soul. Even against minions, it's not that bad of regen. And Light Binding's gonna mean almost nothing here. Yeah, I mean, as we said at the very beginning of the game, dream scenario for Jax. Uh, he, he's living the dream right now. It, he's fully operational inside the base. Cannot be stopped. He's going for the kills. Goes for the flash on Ejaculate. They're going to knock him down. A killing spree for Bin, and he wants even more. Yu Yinchad is stuck in front of the Nexus. Barely walks away. 369, the target here as well. Double dash the way on Renekton. Stays alive, but the base is in shambles. Sooning take down a kill. They take down two in hits. They will find a third as well, and they will also look for the Nexus. 5v4. Baron time's out, but the Ocean Soul is still on. They are ready to go for even more. How good can Top Esports fight? Right now, 369 is going to lose his Guardian Angel, and there is not enough damage being dealt. Knight is going to try. He holds his health back up, but there's still no chance. They're going to find the Shockwave to knock down 369. They're going to knock down an inhibitor. They're going to knock down turrets soon. Wan Fung stuck in a bad spot, but he's still got the shielding. A double kill already for Angel, and they're going to look now for the Nexus turrets themselves. They may not have won an LPL title, but they will knock down every single LPL team when that matters most at worlds as they will knock down the Nexus in game three to double match point for Sooning. What a story here for Sooning. All the way from 11th in the regular season in spring in the LPL to game point, match point here versus the number one LPL seed in the semifinals of worlds. And the pressure mounts and mounts and mounts for Sooning. In your home country, it's been since 2014, the last time a team won Worlds in their own region. And we know we were going to have an LPL finalist. People thought it was probably going to be JD Gaming or Top Esports. Sooning is showing that they are the best team from the LPL at Worlds. And they only need to close one more Nexus to prove that. And then try to do what Samsung White did in 2014, which is win on home soil against Dom Juan Gaming. We'll see if they can do that. And of course, throughout Worlds, MasterCard is highlighting everyone watching from around the globe in MasterCard's Fans of the Decade. Today, we say hello to Jenny, who's cheering for the LPL teams in Shanghai.